Hello, and welcome to this video on linear constant coefficient difference equations. We use difference equations quite frequently in signal processing, both to describe linear time invariant systems and to implement them. So in this video, we're going to consider an LTI system where the input is a sequence x of n and the output is a sequence y of n. Um, for the purposes of this video, we'll consider n to be a time variable. And so we have the general form here of a linear constant coefficient uh, difference equation. On the right-hand side, let me just write out a few terms of this, uh, this summation here. Um, so a few terms of this sum would be b0. The first term is b0x of n. The second term is b1x of n minus 1 plus b2x of n minus 2 etc. right, on up to um, a shifted version all the way up to uh, x of n minus capital L here. right? So that's what this summation represents. And you see what it, what it is. It's a weighted sum of the input at time n uh, plus uh, another, the input at the previous time at n minus 1 plus the input at two previous samples, x of n minus 2, etc. Right? So this is a weighted sum of the inputs, and it's equal to a weighted sum of the outputs on this side. And we say that this is a constant coefficient difference equation because these coefficients, the a sub k's here and the b sub l's here, don't depend on the time variable n. They're constants. They're just numbers, 1, 1 third, whatever, whatever number you want. So now this is the general form of the difference equation, but if we assume that the system is causal, then what we're going to do is just um, rewrite the left-hand side here so that we only have y of n on the left-hand side and that all the previous values of y represented by this summation um, are moved over to the right-hand side, hence the, the negative number here. Um, and so, um, so now we have y of n, Right, the output at time n is written in terms of a weighted sum of the output at previous times plus a weighted sum of the input at the current time and the previous times. So we can solve this equation recursively, right, given a set of initial conditions, right? We have to have initial conditions, otherwise, the solution to this difference equation is not unique. Just like when dealing with differential equations in. Uh, in linear systems. We always have to have initial conditions or auxiliary conditions to solve them. We have to have those auxiliary conditions specified here. So in order to guarantee that our difference equation describes an LTI system, a linear time invariant system, we have to um, assume a specific type of auxiliary condition. So for our initial conditions, we're, we have to assume initial rest. What initial rest just means is that if x of n is equal to 0 prior to some time n0, y of n is equal to 0 for uh, n time n prior to n0. So the system is just sitting there doing nothing until an input starts to come in. That's what initial rest means. And initial rest is going to guarantee us that we have an LTI system. So now how do we solve difference equations? Well, we can solve it in a very similar manner to the way we solve differential equations, if you're familiar with that from linear systems. Uh, we can write the solution in terms of a homogeneous and a particular piece and solve, uh, solve accordingly. We can also use the Z-transform, which we're going to talk about in the future, and that's similar to the Laplace transform that we used in continuous linear systems, similar to the way we solve differential equations. But one thing that we can do with difference equations that it's harder to do with differential equations is we can solve them recursively. So we can just iterate through and solve for y of n at, at successive values of n based off of the previous uh, values of the input and the output. So we'll see a couple of examples of that in this video. So as a first example, let's con consider this system here described by this simple difference equation. y of n minus a half y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n. Clearly, we have the constant coefficients, right? The coefficient here is 1. The coefficient here is minus a half. Coefficient here is 1. 
Um, and we're going to assume that this describes an LTI system so that it's initially at rest. And what we'd like to do is find the output when the input is x of n is equal to delta of n, or this simple unit impulse sequence that I've sketched here. Right? So in other words, we're finding the impulse response of this LTI system described by this difference equation. So we can do that uh, by first rewriting the difference equation in our recursive form. So we just move the minus a half to the n to the other side, and then we get y of n is equal to a half y of n minus 1 plus x of n. Now, we know that the input is not coming in here until time 0. So from initial rest, we know that y of minus 1 and all the previous y's are equal to 0. And that's just from initial rest. And so then we're just going to solve recursively. So let's solve for y of 0. So y of 0 now right, is going to be, all we're doing is there's a 0 here, so it'll be a half y of minus 1. So it'll be a half y of minus 1 plus x of 0. Well, y of minus 1 we know is equal to 0. So, and then x of 0 is over here. x of 0 is equal to 1. So that'll be plus 1. So the output at time 0 is 1. Now we can continue the recursion, find y of 1. That'll be 1 half times y of 0 plus x of 1. Well, 1 half y of 0 will be a half times 1 plus x of 1. Well, x of 1 up here is 0. So we're just adding 0 there. So we get the result is a half. And then y of 2 is equal to a half y of 1 plus x of 2. So that's a half times y of 1, which was a half. So a half times a half plus x of 2, which is 0. So that will be a quarter. And we can continue this uh, recursive solution on down. And it's fairly straightforward to see that y of n here, if we just keep doing the recursion, is going to end up being a half to the n for n greater than or equal to 0, right? That's what these, these values are telling us. A half to the 0 is 1. A half to the 1 is a half. A half to the 2 is a quarter, etc. So we could write this in a more simplified form by just saying y of n is a half to the n times u of n, where u of n is the unit step sequence. So that's a shorthand version uh, for writing the same thing. So that's the solution we have, a, a recursive solution to finding the impulse response of this difference equation. So this was example one. This was the difference equation we started with, right? And we're saying, OK, if we put this into that difference equation, this is what we get out. So I've now just sketched this sequence, right? It's 0 up until 0. At 0, it's 1, then it's a half, then it's a quarter, and it just keeps decreasing as a function of a half to the n as you go on out. This is an example of an imp infinite impulse response system in the sense that it's an infinite length in time. It starts at time 0, and it, while it's uh, approaching 0, it's never exactly 0 um, as we go out to n equal infinity. So it's an infinitely long impulse response. So that's what we mean by infinite impulse response. It's uh, abbreviated as an IIR system. Now, I've drawn a little block diagram here, which shows you how we could implement this, right? This says, OK, y of n is the summation of two things. It's the summation of the input, x of n, with a, a delayed version, uh, a, a scaled, delayed and scaled version of the output, right? So we take the output, we delay it, we scale it by a half, and we add it back to the input. And we can just implement the system this way. This delay is effectively a memory register. So you can think of clocking the output into a storage register here, scaling it by an amplifier, and then just adding it in to the next uh, 
input that comes in to calculate the output. So you can see where we could easily build this either um, using a for loop in a computer, uh, in a computer program, or using hardware uh, memory registers and multipliers. So let's consider another example here. In this example, we have a different um, difference equation, right? Now we've got y of n minus y of n minus 1 is equal to a third times x of n minus x of n minus 3. And again, we're going to solve for its impulse response. So the input is going to be our simple unit impulse signal. So just like we did before, we start by rewriting the um, we rewrite the difference equation. So y of n, we leave y of n by itself on the left-hand side, and we get is equal to y of n minus 1, move that to the right-hand side, plus a third x of n minus a third x of n minus 3. Okay? Um, so now, again, we have initial rest. Um, so, and the input's not going in until time 0, so we know that y of minus 1 and all the previous y's will be zero just from initial rest. The system isn't doing anything until the input starts going in. And then y of zero, now y of zero will be y of minus one plus one third x of zero minus one third x of minus three. Right? So we're just solving for y at, at n equals 0, right? So y of minus 1 is 0. So it'll be 0 plus a third times x of 0, which is a third times 1, minus 0, right? Because x of minus 3 is 0. So that'll just be a third. And then y of 1 will be y of 0 plus 1 third x of 1, minus one-third x of minus two, right? Because it's one minus three, and that leaves minus two here. So y of zero, well, we just solved for that. That's a third. X, one-third times x of one is zero. And then minus a third times x of minus two, that's zero. So we just get a third again. Y of two is equal to y of one plus one-third x of two minus one-third x of minus one. Well, y of one was equal to a third, so plug that in, that's equal to a third, plus a third times x of two, well, that's zero, minus a third times x of minus one, that's minus zero, so we get a third again. y of three now is y of two, plus one-third x of three, minus one-third x of zero, okay? So this will be a third, y of two is a third, plus a third x of three, that's plus zero. Now it's minus a third times x of zero, so it's minus a third times one. So that's gonna be zero there, right? So now y of four will be y of three, plus one-third x of four minus one-third x of one. Well, y of three was zero, plus a third x of four, that's zero, minus a third x of one, that's minus zero. That'll be zero. And it's just gonna stay zero on from there on out, right? So we've solved, you can see this recursion will just lead over and over again to zero once we get past this point. So now we've got a very simple impulse response that's just equal to a third at n equals zero, n equal one, and n equal two. So I've sketched that over here. This was the system we started with, and its impulse response was this simple output here. All right, so that's an example of a finite impulse response system in the sense that it's a finite length impulse response. It starts at zero and it ends at two and everything else is zero outside of that. So you've seen in this video examples of both IIR and FIR systems. And so what I'm going to leave you with is one challenge that you can pursue on your own. Could you show that the LTI system defined by this difference equation has the same impulse response as we found in example two? 
it does. And if you run through the same recursive type solution, you'll easily see that. And uh, as we get to Z transform analysis, that will be an easy way that we can show the equivalence of these two uh, difference equations. So that concludes our video on difference equations. Um, thank you for listening.